G'day, John for the hot end. Today we're going to have a look at the JG Aurora Maker Magic. Thanks, Freddy. The JG Aurora Maker Magic. I don't know why it has such a long name, but this is what it is. It's uh, currently on sale for $199.99 US from the JG Aurora site. You'll find that it's a little dearer on third party sites, and you'll need to be a little careful with this one. On the third party sites it actually is described as a printer with certain features which really don't exist on this printer. For instance it says on one of them that it has a magnetic uh, bed adhesion layer and it simply does not. But Anyway, if you, if you buy direct from JG Aurora or if you're looking for a cheap printer, this one is, is pretty damn good really and the description on the JG Aurora site is accurate. Now, this is a, well I won't say cheap, this is a low cost Chinese manufactured printer. It prints quite nicely really and when you're looking at the fact that it's a $200 printer it's not too bad. It has features. This one that I'm about to show you is the power fail feature and there goes the power fail. Okay nothing here, nothing there, nothing to see and we shall restart it. Now another reviewer actually had a problem with this so I would imagine they must have fixed it in the firmware because mine worked quite well. You just hit the resume print. Sorry for the camera work. It's hard to, to do things when you've got a camera in one hand and trying to uh, do other stuff on the printer with the other hand. You'll see a little blob on the tail there. Um, not really much you can do about that with any power fail feature but you'll see here when it's ready it goes back to home which is what it didn't do for the other reviewer and then it comes back and restarts the print but check out that big dag hanging off the nozzle when it goes back uh, fortunately it was knocked off by a uh, support rather than the model itself but yeah, not, not good really. Some printers I've seen actually tell you to clean the nozzle before it goes back. This one doesn't, but that's a minor detail I think. You'll see in a moment that when it goes back over that blob, it, uh, it actually smooths it out. Now when the model was finished I couldn't find where that blob was. so. It wasn't so bad, but of course this is what you should do when the power fail feature restarts. It's not rocket science. Grab your tweezers and knock that little piece off. You'll always get a tiny bit hanging off the end, but it's not as dramatic as that piece that you saw. So that is the power fail feature. It's quite standard really, most printers have it now. This is the filament run out feature, that black thing there, you can see the filament poking its head out from behind there. So I've cut the filament and it's about to trigger the run out and you'll see, yep, it moves away from the model which is excellent. That way there's no blob at all left on the model and it tells you to wait while the filament unloads and it does. This is with no input from the user at all. It does this automatically. It pushes the filament out 
and another reviewer also found that the blob on the end of the filament when it unloads was difficult to remove well I didn't find that it came straight out there is a bit of a blob on the end but it came straight out no problem loading the new filament it's just a matter of pushing it in same as always it's pretty standard stuff and you push the button to continue so it then feeds the new filament all the way down and comes out the other end where it should that's all good and again get your tweezers clean off that nozzle you can purge more if you want but you don't need to it prints it pushes out enough clean the nozzle and back it goes to start printing again where it left off there it goes sorry the, the lighting for this video was very difficult so you'll see the actual built-in light on the video camera going on and off and, uh, not much I could do about that and there you see the, uh, the new filament printing on the model uh, it always looks cool when you change colors I sit there and watch it until it's well into the print because it just looks good there's a good surface on the heated bed on this machine it uh, has good adhesion properties I've never had any problems with it with adhesion now it has another feature which I've never seen on a printer before there's the SD card if you pull it out it stops it doesn't say anything on the screen there except card removed but the print stops now you get the same problem as when you did the power off in that it just sits on the model and can cause a blob but you replace the SD card and again on the LCD it just says that the cards replaced but it still just sits there it doesn't do anything you have to physically go in and hit resume print and it will continue now that one did leave a bit of a blob but then really when was the last time you took the SD card out of your printer when it was printing like it's not something that I've ever done and I really wouldn't expect that that would be something that happens very often so but the feature is there so I, I had to show it and this is just a bit of fun that there is the brain and he's waiting for pinky to be printed this is a wonderful model I'll put the the link to the model down in the description just can't remember off the top of my head while I'm recording this whose model it was but it'll be in the description it's a great test model this is the underside of the printer nothing outstanding here it has uh, one of those boards now don't uh, put anything in the comments because I really don't know anything about the different boards the the, the electronics on these things is way beyond my pay grade but it's one of those boards where it doesn't have the separate drivers uh, and it's quite quiet in its operation power supply is just a normal generic power supply it's not a mean well but it works and the wiring looked substantial enough to not be any problem but here is a problem that again one of the other reviewers found the heated bed is an aluminium slab with just the thin surface on top to print on there's no glass anywhere and the heating elements go right to the edge of the bed now that's good as far as your printing is concerned but it's not good when you have to use binder clips to hold down the print surface on the top so all I did was just ran some masking tape along the bottom there and that stops any chance of the binder clips scratching at that uh, heater element 
causing uh, short circuit problems. The bed connector most certainly could do with some strain relief. It has quite a lot of movement when the bed goes backwards and forwards. So someone needs to design a strain relief print for that. And this is the wire axis idler assembly. Now it's made of plastic, which I'm a little concerned about. I had a JG Aurora A5 that had a similar setup and that piece actually failed on the A5. This one looks sturdy enough, but we'll wait and see. Now, another thing that I found was the rollers. Now, on this printer they actually fitted really nicely and snugly and didn't have any problem with any play in the rollers. But if you see there, there is no eccentric nut for adjustment. So if, as the printer wears or if something goes awry, and you need to adjust those rollers, you can't, it's fixed. So that's a problem as far as I'm concerned. This is printing PETG. PETG stuck to that print surface beautifully. It runs the PETG through probably as well as, as any printer that I have as far as printing PETG is concerned. It's one of my favorite filaments to use and it goes down rather nicely. This is a nice model. I've printed a lot of these. My wife likes this model because she can plant things in it and you'll see photos of it at the end. It's all very boring really, isn't it? No, not really. I can sit and watch printers print for ages I just sit there okay we're going to run through some photos now of the prints that I did uh, don't forget to hit subscribe on our channel and the notification bell and you won't miss a thing of the upcoming videos we're trying to put out one at least every week so hit that subscribe button and don't forget, we also have our Facebook group, which is the 3D Printing Geeks. And a lot of help and advice on that uh, Facebook group. So go and check that out as well. Okay, that's about all I can tell you about this printer. It's a cheap printer. It prints. It's reasonably good in its print quality. And if you wanted something just to try out, to see if 3D printing is for you, then this would probably be a good choice. Okay, that's all I have for you today. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.